Everybody, welcome back to some St. Clair Saints action. St. Clair did lose game number one here in the Star League playoffs. Uh, pretty resounding victory from Binghamton University. I definitely think uh, played a lot better, specifically the jungler. Midnight looked like an absolute menace on that year. Definitely. So uh, as soon as if, if Binghamton wins this match, that will be the, the win for them. Uh, I believe, right? And yeah. uh, if I'm correct, it's single elimination for us, right? Yes, it is. Okay. So if St. Clair is on, uh, again, elimination point here, we saw their sea lol uh, last week. They ended up losing that in two games as well. So definitely looking to not repeat the same thing that happened in that last week. But we are going to see bands coming through here. Again, we see the Udir as that first band. St. Clair doesn't want to deal with it. And if I got, I I'm kind of surprised by this pick. Honestly, I don't think... It was that effective he in that really second game. I definitely game. think more of the Udir was the issue. So uh, there is going to be, I think they'll they'll probably have a third band there. It's just not listed. Um, but yeah, Aatrox and Jax band away as well. And Yumi going to be the third band. So Binghamton going to stay with what they do. And I expect St. Clair, if, I don't know what that third band is, but I expect it to be a early Viego pick here if it is not, in fact, Viego that got banned. Definitely. Um, well, yeah, I, I have to agree with you that the Vigar, as much as I did show my, my caster bias last game, he didn't pop off. The the Udir, I'm not surprised they got rid of. He was a problem last game. Now, obviously, when we saw the Viego ban in the last game, I was mentioning that I didn't know he was uh, that good right now. But they are going to uh, choose him because, uh, as you were mentioning, he did get buffs to his uh, speed, was it? He got movement speed, attack speed, and AD ratio buffs. So yeah. he got upgraded in a lot of categories. But we are going to see a Zaya ban here on the side of Binghamton. So... Uh, we are going to get a misfortune pick again. I mean, there was only one death on Binghamton for this, uh, for Lynn on that misfortune. Looked so good in that game and definitely was the anchor of that bot lane. And I mean, we're going to, are going to see, ooh, a talon pick. So a little bit of a change up in the jungle here. Not going to see the Udyr obviously was banned away here, but Midnight will switch over to the talon on this one. Can be flexed to mid as well, but we are going to see Yumi picked in for St. Clair and they are going to see the Ezreal. So I definitely like this bot lane pairing for St. Clair. Can play very much, very safe, and is a lot better looking at this uh, at this ball lane matchup. Can be pretty aggressive if they wants to be, but again, you are playing with Yumi, so you are going to be safe throughout a lot more of this game. I I was a little confused at first when I saw that Yumi because I thought that Binghampton banned it, but then I I realized they were just hovering it. Uh, Yumi is surprisingly broken right now but she is uh getting a a nerf in the next patch so hopefully uh, well, you know. deserved. well deserved well deserved well deserved yes Listen, as much as i'm hyped yeah. for st Clair picking up yumi and ezreal i think yumi is on this patch specifically the most broken champion in the game she should not is, be as broken as it, she it's is. The, the problem with it right is it requires very very little actual awareness of what you're doing and more you just a lot of what's what you want to do as a league player is movement it's all about movement and, and you look at how yumi plays it doesn't require a lot of thinking about that stuff it's like okay i press the heal button i press the r button once mm -hmm. in a while and then that's pretty much it so uh, i definitely think a champion with a ton of viability especially with the viego but definitely a champion that doesn't require a ton of uh thinking to play which is always better because you can think about other stuff like warding or team play or stuff like that uh, coordination as well but i mean looking at the rest of these bands we got the mordekaiser little blanc for binghamton and we got the lasandra malzahar so interestingly enough we are going to see three mid laners band away on this one and i mean lasandra malzahar not necessarily the greatest bands i think they're definitely a uh, pretty mediocre at best, but I think St. Clair specifically drafting towards this. Uh, I mean, the thing is with the Malzahar Lissandra, you can't, you'd have that point and click R. So when you have someone with the Yumi, you can just root them in place, stun them in place, or suppress them in place if you're Malzahar, and you can stop them. And it's the Yumi is stuck on them until they're down, and then you can get a double kill out of it. So I think St. Clair specifically drafting towards that. We are going to see the Victor for Binghamton and maybe a Volley Bear here. This is going to be the first Volley Bear we've seen. For St. Clair, so Ricky pulling out something new in the top lane. This should be interesting. Um, I am a little confused. Did they miss that ban for St. Clair? Uh, I don't. They, I don't think they missed it. I think it's in chat. Um, okay. So they discussed it otherwise. So I don't know what it is. Uh, we'll probably find out later on when we actually get to the pick and choose phase in the league client. But 
regardless, uh, what do you think about this Victor pick? And, I mean, we got one more pick for St. Clair coming in here one second. It's going to be the own. So, mm. Zephyrot, something new. We got the own. Should be an interesting one. And rounding out this team comp for Binghamton. Looks like they're going to hover this set. And, I mean, I definitely like set into this team, specifically 100%. because he can take this Volibear, and as much as Volibear wants to engage, he can pick him up and throw him back into St. Clair's team comp. So that is going to be the drafts rounded out. How do you feel about these ones? Uh, I'm thinking if that set builds uh, health, right? The, the team from St. Clair, they do a pretty... Uh, hefty amount of damage do you think that'll uh work out well for the set because obviously his his w scales off of the damage he takes right yeah so um oh riven, riven was, was banned, banned. Okay. Okay. okay so it makes sense i yeah. mean we, we talked about earlier like riven was the first band in that last game so they do end up saving it for the last pick of the rotation but they just don't want to see this top laner on a riven is very very good at it uh, and i mean i don't think the wukong was exile's cup of tea did okay on it but i think that was mostly because his team was looking so good and this or, or this uh udir had so much control over the top half that it, it just worked out for him so gonna be interesting but i mean looking at both these teams i think the set can do well but uh, the problem is that i see for the set is that there's a decent amount of mobility and if you can catch barlow and fresh on this edge with you mean definitely can be a good thing but it's going to be so hard to actually access them in the back line so i think the one problem st Clair is going to have with this team comp specifically is going to be hard engage because you have the volley bear who can kind of hard engage you have the big who has a small stun but outside of that you have kind of an ezreal yumi and your mid laner is yon so yon has some good engage but again, it's very situational. Now we were talking about uh, a couple minutes ago how Yumi is uh, sadly, disturbingly broken in this uh, patch. And uh, I just wanted to say real quick, uh, as the great Riot Games company once said, we don't think our our champions kits are overloaded. Hmm. So I think That's we my favorite <laughs> meme. <laughs> we my have favorite to go meme. Off what they say. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, looking at this team comp, the Ezreal Yumi is going to be very, very strong because it can keep uh, the members of uh, Binghamton at range for most of the time. You're really going to have a hard time unless you're this talent diving in the back line, getting on top of this Ezreal Yumi. Uh, if you're like playing the set, playing the victory, you're going to have a hard time actually reaching all the way back there to get to the end. And you're playing with the uh, Misfortune Soraka again. So they're not really going to have a lot of threat onto this Ezreal Yumi in the back line. They're just going to be able to free fire onto Binghamton so I'm really looking for Midnight again we saw him step up in that first game definitely star uh, the MVP of that first one for Binghamton here looking for him to step up here in game number two and be the difference maker because I think a lot of this game is going to come down to him being able to uh, get down to that ball lane and be able to put this Ezreal Uni behind. So I am seeing a a very aggressive team obviously on, on both teams they have pretty aggressive but uh in terms of St. Clair's bot lane, I know Misfortune and Soraka are very, very good right now, but when you take someone who has as much damage as Ezreal, if you can hit his his um, skill shots, and you put a Yumi on top of him, uh, I, I, I gotta say, I think uh, bot lane might be in, in St. Clair's favor here. I'll always favor an Ezra Yumi lane. It gives you so much uh, options to play safe. You can play aggressive with it, and Yumi is, is so powerful. Uh, I definitely think any lane with a Yumi is going to be favored. And I mean, looking at this ball lane, I definitely think I don't think they're going to play aggressive. You have a Misfortune Soraku who just wants to sit back, not do anything too crazy. And Ezreal is Ezreal Yumi is the definition of safe. So I think definitely both these bot lanes going to be playing pretty easy going in this early game. I'm looking for Viego to look towards the set in the top lane. Ricky did pretty well on this Camille in that first game and didn't opt to go back for it. Opted to go for a little bit more engagey on this Volley Bear, uh, a little bit more mobility around the map. And I mean, I think the Volley Bear is pretty decent right now. Isn't necessarily the strongest champion in that top lane. Uh, and in the set, I, I think pretty evenly matched up between these two champions and how they play and how their kits play out. Um, so I'm looking for one of these junglers to roam up, try and get their top laner advantage here and push themselves forward because that's really going to be the difference maker, I think, in this game. Both mid laners are uh, going to be pretty safe in the mid lane. Again, I think maybe the own going to be looking to roam out of Victor, just trying to farm up, get to that late game state where it becomes just an absolute monster. And... Uh, I mean, that's going to be the difference maker for me is whether this Yone can start roaming. And again, we had it last game. We wanted to see the LeBlanc roam. She didn't get to roam as much because this Udyr was so strong. If Rick, if Zephyrok can get to side lanes, it can put pressure, especially on this bot lane, on the Soraka. That's going to make a huge difference. 100%.
Um, I I know that you you said it's pretty evenly matched for top lane, but whenever I see a a set going in, it's just <sighs> set is an interesting character, and I think unless you play him like so wrong, I I don't know. I kind of feel like it's easy for for a set to win a lane. Uh, it, it depends how you play it, right? Because the problem with set is he really has as autos plus he has one W. If he doesn't land the W, especially in something like a volleyball, oh, yeah, you can definitely win that lane. So it is take a decent amount of skill and balancing between mm -hmm. your spells, knowing when to pull the W trigger and knowing when to use it for a defensive, when to use it for offensive. So a set definitely can be played very wrong. Oh, yeah. But I'm looking for these top laners, both of them very, very high class uh, master tier players. Going to be very very able to play both these champions to their maximum potential and that's where i look forward into this game seeing can they use it to try and get somewhere around the map i think volley bear with a decent amount of wave clear especially with that passive chain lightning is going to be able to shove the lane out help out his jungler again uh and i want to talk about e-hug on this viega we've seen mm -hmm. him play it four times five times through the season he's looked good every single time he's played it and i think he's such a high priority right now in the jungle pool is uh i think on 11.21 the best champion in the jungle and realistically looking forward talon kind of fell off without that uh with the nerf onto that gore drinker and onto that iron spike whip so i think definitely the advantage here going to be going to e-hug in the champion pool specifically but talon can be a menace mm -hmm. so i definitely think there's a chance here for midnight to storm back and to close out the series for bu well uh that's actually a question i had for you that i was hoping you could answer for me uh now i have a a lot of people tell me that they they believe Viego is like the the gank master in terms of jungling. Uh, I I don't understand this because uh, when he comes to your lane, you can very clearly see his um his ring, right? Yeah. Now, when you see that, uh, most people you know just start backing up and and try and get out of the way. I I'm, I'm wondering how. Can Diego really that good? requires a decent amount of setup from your uh, laner. So mm. if you're looking at Yone, he has his knockup to set up for the Viego stun. And you have Volibear with uh, several tools with the slow on the E and with the uh, stun on the Q to set up for your jungle gank. So Viego is, can be a very, very good jungler because he puts down a lot of burst damage and has his W for the stun. But you do need a little bit of setup for him to actually be effective on a, on a gank. So him by himself ganking, not necessarily most effective but if he can get his lane counterpart to add some cc in there that's going to be when he can actually be effective so i'm going to be looking for him to maybe posture towards this top lane give the volley bear a lead because the cc will be able here we are going to go game number two going to start up here st Clair looking to punch back against Binghamton University on the brink of elimination here in the Nate Star League, trying to keep themselves alive and push us into a game number three. We are going to see everyone lining up here, you know, just making sure no one's going to come in. Some, uh, you know, early uh, uh, hits trying to come off here. I forgot the word for uh, pokes. <laughs> but uh, nothing, nothing crazy going on too much. It's just, you know, lining up, make sure no one's coming into your territory. You want to make sure it's yours. <laughs> yeah, Barlow throwing in a little bit of poke here, but uh, I don't think T either team is going to want to push too far forward here again. St. Clair fighting for their lives here in the Nace Star League. Super will catch out this ward here, so a slight XP Minions and gold spawned. bonus to the side of Bram Binghamton here, but won't net them too much in the end. And we are going to see summoner spells here going to be teleports on all four of the solo laners in the bot lane. We have uh, Ezreal with the Exhaust Flash. Yumi with the heal ignite, and we have or or Corio going to be bringing the heal as well as exhaust for Lin. So again, like I was saying, bot lanes are going to be looking to play very very safe. You have no uh, you have ignite on Yumi, but other than that, all defensive summoners for both sides of the bot lane. Now uh, my question is with Yumi. Usually you see the Yumi go on top of the jungler while they're getting the first camp. Uh, why do you think they didn't do that this time? Uh, most likely wanted to save the shield for when you get back to lane. Able to save up some of that poke. He's going to come down here in top lane. And I think Exile, yeah, I was going to say Exile is going to want to fight a little bit here in the early rounds. I think definitely set with the advantage basically until you hit uh, level 2 here. And that's when Ricky going to pick up the W. But they are going to go for a fight here actually. And it's going to be Conqueror proc as well. Ricky going to have to play this really safely. They are going to be still fighting in that top lane. We are going to see a bot lane initiation though. Barlow looking for some poke down here in Orcorio. Top lane meanwhile, both these top laners are going to be down. Ignite going to come down though onto the Soraka. Soraka trying to walk away. And she'll be able to stay alive for them when Heal going to come down as well for Fresh here. And it looks like both bot laners are going to walk away. And I was saying there was going to be no action here in the bot lane to start us off. 
but uh, they're making me eat my words. All four summoners down for St. Clair, and three out of four down for Binghamton. You know, Ricky LaFleur took a lot of damage in that first fight. Obviously, he, he healed most of it back, but that was extremely in favor for Exile there. I'm, I'm wondering if, if Ricky is going to be playing a lot more uh, passively now, defensively, because he knows, okay, this set, he can, you know, he can wreck me. Like, he, he has a lot of damage. Yeah, definitely is going to be a threat here. Don't know how much Ricky wants to fight this. He's going to land the stun and we'll get the shield, so he won't be able to he won't be taking too much damage. But the E is going to land. Haymaker going to come down as well. So Ricky will be poked out a decent amount here in the top lane to start us off. And I'm kind of surprised Ricky is opting in for these fights. Set with the passive that heals him with more missing HP means he will be able to heal a lot faster than Ricky will. So, uh, I mean, a lot of poke. Ricky does like to do a lot of this poking on, poking early, trying to get an advantage so he can walk down to that scuttle and help out his jungler. But meanwhile, in the top lane, it will be a little bit of a scuffle here. Ricky looking for a stun here. Eha going to be here to help out as well, but we'll just back off. So normally we see Ricky kind of dominating this early game, but the problem is you're playing into set, right? And you're playing into set. Set's passive gives him more healing, uh, more health back, the more missing HP he has. So he's just going to keep being able to accrue this healing back and means Volibear is going to be forced back here. Maybe even use his TP early on. So, I am going to say he he did have to back because he did take, like, a lot of damage there, right? So, I'm wondering what Ooh. what is he going to do to try and come back from that? He did do this. TP E-Hug e -hug is actually floating in this top bush, and I don't know if Exile knows this. So, Sun will come down here. Slow going to apply as well. Exile going to have the W still available. Going to try and save it here for the third dive. W going to land, though. Sun will be able to get down here. Exile, barely any HP. Going to go for the flash first. Blood going to go over to E-Hug there, and St. Clair striking back with a vengeance. That was, <laughs> that was a quick kill and a very nice kill securing that first kill for the entire game. Uh, I'm pretty sure first kill gives uh, bonus money. I don't want to say that if I'm wrong. 100, 100 gold. gold. Okay. Now, one thing I will say about the, the Yumi, uh, I believe it's Fresh Bling. Um, it, thankfully, you do see him taking full advantage of his bop and block passive, which sadly in norms you don't see happen very often, but uh, he, he knows his champ, obviously. He wouldn't be playing her if he didn't, but uh, it's very good to see that he's taking full advantage of that in his fights. So we'll be engaged here in the ball lane here. Barlow's still full HP here. Yumi took a lot of damage in that fight. We'll go for the E and gonna assassinate Lin there. The E doing so much damage. Jungler's gonna join here as well. Gonna flash out the stun. Midnight, really, really good reaction time. So Orsorio will pick up that kill on the Soraka. We'll transport over to the E hug here. E hug gonna have the stun up here in a few seconds. Conqueror is active. Ignite gonna come down as well. Gonna get Orcoria, gonna transform into the Soraka. Going for the slow, we'll be able to get a double kill. For Ehug and Ehug, 3 and 0 oh now on this Viego, doing exactly what we want him to, just smurfing on everyone on this jungler. So it seems like St. Clair now has a pretty hefty lead. Obviously, they're only about, you know, uh, 1k up in gold, uh, but we are going to uh, see the set still trying to make very aggressive plays here. It's going to be Exile hitting the Haymaker, but down to very low HP here, and that's the problem. Once you use a Haymaker, Ricky going to get Exile there with the W. But Zephyrop, meanwhile, is going to go in the mid lane. Gonna miss the R4 stuff, flash out here, but Scrub It cannot follow up, has no mana, so the Victor won't be able to claim that kill and will mean Zephyrot forced to back here, but across both lanes in top lane and bot lane, St. Clair picking up an advantage and, and 3 0 now on E Hug, gonna be a menace on this Viego. You know, I will say with that set, he, he died. Uh, very fast. I think it was to the jungler. Yeah, yeah. The the Viego is now three and zero, oh. but um, uh, he he went in for a very aggressive play right after he died, and I I don't know if that was the best play because even though the the Volibear only got an assist bonus, that's still an assist. It, it, I, I don't know. I, obviously, it's set. You need to be aggressive with set, right? But that was like right away. There was no hesitation. Yeah, he did have the level advantage there, but uh, that was a Kindle gem onto this Volley Bear, which means he had lower cooldowns and was able to get the W off just after the flash happened. So Exile going to have his flash up here in just a second. And looking at this game now, St. Clair up about two and a, oh, almost 2.5k gold here. Already just six minutes into this game. A lot of that is going to be on Ehug over the jungle counterpart in Talon here. Ehug going to spot out Exile on the sweeper, but not going to go for him actually. Going to spot out the ward placement, so we'll know that he is in the top half here. So they could look for a dragon here sometime soon because they know that Viego was top, but he will walk down towards the bot river here. Zephyr going to shove out mid lane as well, so maybe 
they look to translate this into a Cloud Drake early on in this game. We're going to see the Zephra trying, you know, just basic poking, trying to get some damage off. Uh, as uh, the, I think that was the Ezreal that just slightly walked by there, or if not the jungler. I, it doesn't seem like anyone's going to try and go for this dragon, which I I don't know if that's quite the best move. A little bit of crawling here in the top lane, but nothing too much happening. And I mean, looking right now, the talent is very far behind this uh this Echo, or Echo, the uh, Viego right now has a Sheen and a Longsword as well. It is down about a K gold here, so Viego will back soon and pick up that Sunder in just a few seconds. So definitely has that advantage, sitting on 2K gold right now. When he backs and picks up the Sunder, that's when he's going to be very strong. So there will be, uh, actually I think they're going to go for Herald here. So yeah, Volibear is going to be helping out here. Ricky and Viego are going to combine to get up this Herald. And when that Herald goes down, I think that's definitely going to be, oh, this could be bad though. There's going to be a stun coming down, all going to come through. And Zephyrot will be able to save himself. Does have to use the ult, but will be able to stay alive here. Lane going to be engaged on here in the bot lane. Exhaust is going to come through as well. Eog and we all did take that Herald, so they will get that advantage here fighting in the bot lane as well. Lin was forced to use the Exhaust to keep Barlow at bay. Barlow did, did exchange that, so a couple summoners down in bot lane, but St. Clair again taking the advantage by getting that Herald. So we are going to see that uh, our jungle Diego, of course, uh, as I said earlier, is, is 3-0. Um, I think he does have a very major um, advantage over the Talon right now. Uh, as we were saying before the game started, the Talon is um, a very good pick because he's a very good jungler. Uh, we are going to see some fights going on. Ooh, it's going to be a dive. He's going to disable that turret here. He's going to go for the dunk. Exile going to go for the Haymaker as well, but that's not going to matter. He'll be taking down here. Eha going to spend that ult on here, but Zephyrot going to be all on his lonesome here trying to fight off Midnight. Midnight will eventually take him down here in the top lane. Zephyrot just trying to run away and delay for as long as possible. He does have two teammates up here, but I don't know if they're going to get there in time. Barlow going to be poking down here in the bot lane, but top lane. The Herald will be summoned, and that will mean this turret will go down here in just a second. St. Clair already taking that advantage. Eha going to try and steal away the Groms here. But Talon will be able to get the rake in. He's going to be able to get those. And top lane turret going down for St. Clair already. Top half looking. It's St. Clair favored significantly. They did place that Rift Herald there, which really did help with getting that tower. Uh, this means that it's going to have one less lane for them to worry too much about. Obviously, they still have to keep an eye on it. Oh, Fresh does manage to land that kill, but that's going to mean Zephyrog going to be gauge here at midnight. Midnight going to try and get this kill. Going to be forced to flash away here. We'll be able to hop this wall. Zephyrog going to be going back to the E exile. Going to catch him up in a stun, and he will go down here, so he will pay for his sins. Zephyrog finally being taken down by this Yone. Midnight maybe looking for Yug. Yug pretty low. And they do have a pink ward in the tri-bush, so Midnight going to try and heal off this blue buff. But uh, I was going to say, it's too bad Fresh got that kill and not Barlow. Because if Barlow picks up that kill, they can shove in the mid lane, he can back, get his item, and that's really when they can have a powerhouse in this bot lane. They'll be able to fight this misfortune and possibly be able to take some more plates in the bot lane. So uh, that kill that the set got, that was his first kill. Um, he he was kind of behind for a little while there, but you know he, he might be able to bring it back. Um, I would like to see him get a couple more kills just because... It's always fun to see a set uh, fed. It, <laughs> it's, you can get some pretty crazy plays with uh, a fed set getting down to like, what, 20 health and then just healing it all back. Yeah, for sure. Looking at this game now, 4 0 Viego here. Going to be up uh, about 1200 gold on his counterpart here, but going to be engaged here in the mid lane. We'll put a decent bit of damage down on the scrub it here. Viego will be here as well. We'll back off. And again, Cloud Drake is up. So St. Clair going to be hunting for it. They are up a significant portion of gold right now, about 5k. So they will be able to just force themselves around this map wherever they want to. They, especially with this 4-0 Viego over this Talon, definitely going to have a lot more presence. And actually built the Essence Reaver here, which is, I mean, odd because it gives you mana back. But I, I think it is kind of like, so... What they built on Trinity, so Trinity Mid was really big last patch. Yeah. And what a lot of people built was the first item was the shield bow to give yourself uh, extra healing or they built the Kraken for extra damage. And they built Essence Reaver second because it gave you a lot of cooldown reduction. It gave you cooldown reduction on your uh, on your abilities as well as giving you 20% base cooldown reduction. So it gives you a lot more cooldown. But that's going to be gauge here in the mid lane. That's going to be three people. And that's going to be a dead victor. Night, night to you, sir. There is nowhere for you to go. And that's going to mean St. Clair. Picking up another kill and some more plates in the mid lane. A lot of good coordination here. This mid lane 
jungle top lane combination for St. Clair finally coming alive here in game number two. Now, speaking of those those numbers for how much money uh, everyone had, uh, we never really got back to that in the last game. How it, was the uh, the second number? Was that the total earnings so of the entire game? If you look game? at the graph, yeah. So if you look at the graph here, the left side is going to be what they have in their bank right now. The right side is how much they've accrued throughout the whole game. So okay. uh, when you're looking at the gold difference specifically, it's very good to remember. Like right now. Um, they might be, might have like 1,500 stacked in their inventory. So they have gotten more over the course of the game, but they have more stored. But meanwhile, on top lane, there's going to be an engaged TP can come through as well. Ricky trying to 1v2 here for the moment, not going to be able to take him down. He's going to go down really early here. And Zephyrod is going to be left alone here in the 1v2. Doesn't have an ult available either. Going to try and flash out of this one. Not going to have anywhere to go though. Knockoff will manage to hit Midnight trying to run away. And Zephyrod will be able to escape. Meanwhile, they're being engaged in the mid lane. That's going to be nowhere. And a fresh going to pick up another kill on this Yumi. Seven stacks on this Dark Seal. And this Yumi going to be getting stronger and stronger throughout this game, especially with the 402 Viego on her side. You know, I will say when you said um, the, the second number was the accrued money through the entire game, I had a little Vietnam flashback accounting? to my accounting class. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> For sure, that's uh, it's definitely, but I mean, League is a game all about the gold, right? A lot oh, of people yeah. think uh, League is about the kills and how much you can get, but you gotta remember, every time you get a turret plate, it's 160 gold, so if you get two turret plates, it's just the same amount, it's actually more than getting a kill would be worth, right? So oh, yeah. that's why you gotta think about when you're doing a lot of these high-level games and a lot of the high-level plays, like, a lot of times people will answer a kill or some pressure on the top side with some plates on the bot side, objective, match with an objective, because no matter what happens, you're not that you don't have to match getting something with the exact same thing. You don't have to match getting a kill with a kill. You can't just go on the other side of the map, pick up a couple plates and, and it's even. So I think that's definitely something you learn as you get higher a level yeah. and you get better at the game is that not necessarily every kill has to be answered. And just because you have a kill lead doesn't mean necessarily you have a lead in the game and you're going to be stronger than your opponent. See, accounting is everywhere. Stay in oh, school, yeah. kids. <laughs> so Zephrot will be R-ing out here. And I mean, looking so far at how this game is panning out, St. Clair up a significant portion of gold. Now 6k have grown their lead. Uh, every seems like every time we switch back to the gold, it is another K up for St. Clair here. But most of that is going to be on Ricky here. Up 1,500 on his counterpart. Most of the lanes up about a K. A piece here, top lane, going to be close to even, actually. Only up about 300, but Zephyrot going to be flashed on here, actually. Midnight going for the all-in onto Zephyrot here. We'll be able to get this kill with the help of Lin here. Lin will claim the 300 gold for that kill. So, again, just caught out here on this uh, Yone and Zephyrot. Unfortunately, not on the LeBlanc with as much uh, agency in these in these fights in the bushes, that means he will be taken down against St. Clair. Going to be able to push out this out. Does mean they end up getting the Rift Herald. So like I said, a kill in the bot lane does result in 300 gold in Misfortune's pocket. But again, the Herald here is going to be very strong for St. Clair. And they will be able to get an objective with that death on their mid laner. Uh, the Viego did uh, get a 400 gold bounty on him now. So if anyone can take him down, that is going to be a nice little buff. And you're probably going to be able to finish off an item. Um, I... Let's see if he can make it through the whole game without dying. <laughs> oh, it's going to be engaged here. Just going to go for the stun. He's going to walk actually all the way around and we'll be able to escape at the backside. So they were hunting for him. He was in a bad space, but with the Yumi, gives you the extra movement speed. Him in his E is actually very, very quick and he's able to escape a lot of these engages that the players from Binghamton University want to do because they don't have any long range engage. And that's the problem with Binghamton's calm, right? Is that you have exile for a little bit of engage here. You have midnight, obviously, with uh, a bit of engage with the ultimate. Gonna miss the stun though. You're gonna have to get out of here. We'll be able to escape that zone. We'll be able to get out of there. But like I was saying, they lack long range engage. So the problem is gonna be the only way you can actually get into a fight is going to be with this set just literally walking up and taking your Volley Bear and throwing him at you. And, and if Volley Bear plays it right, if Ricky can stay around uh, the outside of a fight and not force himself into the middle of it, then there's not really a good way for Binghamton to start off these fights. And, and now that you're down so much gold, you have to start making these fights readily available and being able to take advantage of it because uh, the further this game is going to go, I definitely think St. Clair have the advantage in the scaling with the Viego, with the Yone, and with the Ezreal. You know, I am looking at the Yumi right now and seeing that uh, with uh, every item that she has, she doesn't have a mythic item yet. Like, not not any moonstone or nothing. Well, yeah, she went for the anti-heal first. 
because uh, you have a Soraka, so it is the most important thing to build. When you're playing against okay. a Soraka support, you need to have that anti-heal built first, and you see the uh, that Kempunk is built for the Yumi here, so we'll be able to reduce 60% of the healing out of the Soraka, which is very, very important. Um, and even looking at uh, the Talon, who will have a bit of lifestyle himself, and the Set, who's going to be able to heal up quite a bit as well, it's definitely going to help them out in that regard. And I think the Yumi is going to be going for a Ludens here, actually. It does have the Lost Chapter. So we'll be looking towards that Ludens as a second item, but uh, you're against the Soraka, the most important thing is going to be getting the anti-heal. Stun going to land, though. Pia going to get exhausted immediately. Yumi ult going to come out as well, but everyone will disengage here. Harold going to be pushed down in the, in the mid lane here. We'll get about two-thirds of that turret down, but uh, a quick engage and even quicker disengage by St. Clair because they realized once Eug burned that exhaust from Lin, it meant that he will have control over this jungle. Stun going to come out here in just as well. Midnight going to have to alt out here, going to walk back out away from the pit, and St. Clair going to get this dragon uncontested. Now we are going to see that uh, St. Clair is about 5k ahead in gold, which uh, is a decent amount, right? Um, uh, do you think that that'll prove to be bad for Binghampton right now? Yeah, for sure. Always being, being down gold is always bad because oh, you don't yeah. have your items coming through. You have less damage. Usually, means you are lacking in experience as well. So you are going to be down in that regard. But I mean, realistically, looking forward, I definitely think uh, it's not as surmount insurmountable as it was earlier. It seems like Saint Clair or uh, Saint Clair isn't really pushing their lead too much further forward than they were earlier. So as long as Binghamton can keep going, they have a better and better chance of fighting because the longer a game goes, it's rule of league. The longer a game goes, the less difference a gold lead means and the more an ex execution matters. Mm -hmm. So looking later on in this game, I definitely think I like the chances of Binghamton winning these fights because they do have a really good wombo combo with the set and the misfortune. And you have the victor on top of it who's going to be providing a lot of damage and a talent who can assassinate the backline. But, but like I said earlier, the problem right now is this Viego Yumi because you've seen like Yumi Fresh is just kind of sitting on Viego when they're roaming around the jungle. And if you get caught up by a stun, you have to use something to get out. You saw a couple of ultimates forced out from midnight there just to escape this Viego Yumi. So the more that this Viego can be impactful and keep burning that cooldown, the harder it's going to be for him to eventually be able to get strong enough to kill this uh, Ezreal Yumi, which is, which is going to be his primary goal. Oh yeah. Uh, now, I am kind of seeing that it seems like the, the two schools have switched roles uh, from the last game where uh, Bing was uh, a decent amount of gold ahead, a couple, you know, a decent amount of kills ahead, not many, but, and also three drags up. And now we're seeing the roles kind of reversed where St. Clair College has two dragons and uh, maybe a third on the way, uh, gold up, kills up, and... Uh, you know, they, they have someone on their team who is crazy fed, and plus a Yumi who is 2-0, which is fed enough for a Yumi to uh, basically change the tides of an entire game. Yeah, for sure. I definitely think Yumi is going to be very impactful throughout this game. I think this Viego now sitting on two items with the shield bow, and he has the super built. Going to be extremely strong, but I mean, again, there there's lots of chances for Bingham, Binghamton to come back in this game. I just think they have to seize the correct, correct opportunity, such as at this Baron coming up in just three seconds. 100%. Uh, we are going to see the team of St. Clair kind of uh, moving forward a little bit. Uh, not really a fight happening, but every, everyone seems to be in the top Red half of the map. Uh, we are going to see the Talon start to engage on the Volibear, though, along with the set, I believe. Uh, and a miss, miss, missed misfortune ult. Yeah, he's gonna be engaged here in the top lane though. Ricky gonna be in a one v two here. We'll have the ultimate available. Gonna go for it, but he's gonna whiff everything. Gonna get ulted back here, and we'll be taken down by midnight. So Ricky gonna be taken out on the top lane. Meanwhile, the mid lane, they did force the misfortune out of the flash, but weren't able to actually pick up the kill on her. So uh, definitely not a favorable trade for Saint Clair there. Binghamton striking back, picking up a kill for themselves in the top lane, and it didn't really cost them anything except for their bot tier 2, which, I mean, was going to go down regardless anyway. Yeah. Uh, we are going to see uh, that a lot of people have, uh, you know, built their a uh, couple of items so far. Uh, usual stuff with Set, he's building health, as I kind of believed he would in the first place, you know. You take more damage, you do more damage. That's pretty much just how Set's played. Talon is going to be going for, I believe that's just more damage items. Uh, I'm not very... Uh... Yeah, I did pick up the Serpent's Fang, which is very interesting. It reduces a significant amount of shield from St. Clair, and if you look at what the uh, the Yone shielding and even the Volibear shielding is going to be pretty effective for it, but realistically, 
it's not super convenient. I don't think it's necessarily an item you have to build. And I mean, it does help with the shield bow specifically, just because the Diego and Yon are both running shield bow as well. So we'll cut down on those shields. But I really think it puts him kind of behind in his rotation because when you look at Ezreal Yumi, Ezreal Yumi is just going to be healing. There's not really a lot of shielding about them. And, and that's your primary goal. That's who you want to be hitting in these fights. So I definitely think um, a good choice for the team, but not necessarily for his role. I definitely think he should have gone with something like the Yumus to speed him up. Would have been a lot more helpful. He's going to get engaged on here. Going to hop the wall. We'll be able to escape it, but every time he picks up, the, he has the Yumi on his back. He goes for these Ws. Midnight have to has to walk back and has to respect the fact that if he gets hit by one of those stuns, he just dies instantly. So, I'm I'm kind of wondering here. I'm really hoping that we can see this Yumi go through the entire game. The Yumi and the Viego go through the entire game without losing a single uh, uh, life. They uh, the Yumi obviously is two zero and three, with the Viego being four zero and two. And I, <laughs> I know it's it's asking a lot to see someone go through an entire game without dying, but it would be nice. Oh, this is dangerous though. He doesn't have his D available. The bullet time gonna come out here. Gonna get exhausted. Gonna barely be able to survive here for just the moment. Gonna wait for this Vega to walk out here. Zephyr gonna go for the ult in the back but not gonna catch anyone with it. But Ricky Fleur gonna take down the victor here really early on in this fight. Yet Yon gonna back up to his teammate here. Exile trying to find anyone, but doesn't find anyone with that ultimate. Just dumps him into no one so will mean St. Clair gonna get a clean kill on this victor and will maybe look to force this baron that i honestly at this point i i know anything is winnable all right you got to keep in mind anything is winnable but at this point st Clair is five kills ahead which kills is not that big of a deal uh but the gold they are six thousand gold ahead with three turrets up and they have two dragons over. Obviously, uh, you know, Bing Hampton's going for a dragon right now, but St. Clair is going to get the, the Baron. I think that's a pretty good trade-off. Yeah, I think at this point the problem is the Victor was dead, so at best, you're gonna have to give up the Baron and at least they're getting something back. So I think best case scenario, that was it for Bing Hampton. They were able to trade out that dragon. They were able to push off the dragon soul for at least another uh, 10 minutes. So definitely gonna have time to think about how they wanna play out these next couple of fights before they're forced to think about contesting for the Mountain Soul. So I definitely think it was a good move for them, able to answer back with at least something in their favor. But St. Clair with this Baron on all five members will allow this Volley Bear and the Yon to swap to the side lanes. And with, Yon, with this uh, Victor being at one item, just sitting on this Ludens as well as an Aether Wisp, but compared to this Yon who has the Shield Bow and the critical and the uh, infinity edge built i definitely think the side lane is going to be very hard winning for st Clair. and now we see the sunder coming through as well for this volley bear both side laners for st Clair significantly ahead of their counterparts and i think this push is going to be very very strong if you can put barlow as well as this va go mid and just keep forcing in these waves i don't think there's going to be a good answer for binghamton and they're going to lose a lot so it will be uh barlow looking for yug your e hug going to be trying to find something in the jungle here. We'll be able to clear out a little bit of vision in Exile and Midnight. Going to be trying to defend this top wave. Ricky with Baron. can just force himself onto this wave and Zephra going to be able to free hit here and, and there's not going to be a ton of damage. I expect him to build with Zen next and just be able to sideline against his Victor very, very effectively. Exile maybe looking for something in the top lane. We'll find Ricky Shield going to come out here. We'll be able to pop that Haymaker getting it stunned up onto this turret and that's going to be slammed into the back line. That's going to be so much damage. Strong call Gonna come through though, gonna force Barlow to flash, gonna go for the ult, not gonna catch anyone though. Ehug gonna execute the jungler there. Talon gonna go down as well. Ehug flying all over this fight, gonna take down all the members. Stun gonna come out here, shut down, picked up on Barlow, but it doesn't matter. Ehug is running rampant, double kill for Zephyrod. That's just gonna be Scrub It trying to run away. The only member left here for the side of Burnt Binghamton Bingham and St. Clair gonna force themselves. They have Baron actually, so they can look to end here. So my question to you right before this uh, this game ends, because I'm pretty sure this game is about to end. Um, how does the Yumi work with the Baron buff? Uh, I don't know. Honestly, couldn't tell you whether or not. <laughs> I'm assuming it applies when you're on someone else, but I guess we'll find out here. There looks like a Soraka did come back, and St. Clair going to be pretty low here, so it will mean they have to back up. They did get a Nexus turret, but weren't able to quite finish off the job, which means there could be a chase here. Yumi at zero mana, so she can't poke out with that Q, and that means they will be a chase that will ensue here. Scrub it, look for something. It's not gonna come through though, we'll catch one. They're gonna go for re-engage, but it doesn't matter. Ricky gonna go down as well, and that's gonna be a triple kill for this Talon and St. Clair. Just 
through this uh, entire lead they had. A triple kill, two shutdowns for this talent. And suddenly, this talent goes from absolutely nothing to uh, the three items here in just a second. So St. Clair with an opportunity to close the game. Weren't able to take that final Nexus turret and gave this talent a triple kill. And Binghamton has an avenue back into this game. So I know that the... I think it was a whole team of St. Clair died there, or did someone get away? Three people Three died people. St. Clair. So, uh, three people from St. Clair did die there, but I gotta say, I, even though they did get a nice, uh, on the side of Bing, they did get a nice little uh, kill bonus there, I don't think that really changed anything. At this point, the, the, the side of St. Clair, they have uh, one inhib, they have one turret in front of the, uh, the Nexus, I think at this point, all they need to do is have one heavy push, and I think they'll be able to win this. I definitely think they, with a 10k advantage, St. Clair still hold this game in their pocket. I think they definitely have a lot of confidence here. E over the wall, trying to find Midnight, but won't be able to get too much damage on him. They'll be backing off here and just going back into the jungle, and they have so much control here of how the game flow is going to be. But again, there is going to be a dragon up in one minute. St. Clair most likely going to go towards that, pick up that one and extend the game for another five minutes till the next soul is coming through. So I think Binghamton bought themselves a little bit of time with those shutdowns, but I definitely think their time is coming to a close here. Looks like they will actually just push themselves in this, but meanwhile, Zephra is going to be caught out here in the top lane, going to be found here by three members of Binghamton, but they have to back up because St. Clair is pushing this bot lane, and all coming down here in the top lane. Zephra going to go for the 1v1 here, but Midnight will be here to catch up as well. Has the ultimate available, going to flash out, Gonna queue out, gonna ult out, he will escape here for just a moment. Gonna hop over the wall, though Zephra will go down here in just a moment. 650 gold shut down. But meanwhile, Nexus turret's gonna be going down here, so Binghamton will have to try and come back to their Nexus, but no one is gonna be hitting it. Ricky gonna take down Oracolo as well. That's gonna be another kill over. An ultimate gonna come down. I'm not gonna catch anyone, though, but St. Clair with the Nexus exposed. Are they gonna go for it? That's so much damage from the Z Victor, though. Victor will get him with the Q. Let's look, Ricky trying to take down this Nexus. Nexus down to 400 HP. But Ricky gonna be taken down here in just a second. The auto can come down. Not gonna be enough though. Double kill for this victory. Yuk gonna be taken down by Midnight as well. That means the uh, Yumi will go down. And that's gonna be Yuk gonna flash out here trying to get anything, but he can. An ace for being into Nexus exposed down to half HP, but St. Clair cannot close it out. Greedy for some kills. And Binghamton again, another chance to come back in this game. St. Clair aced. And uh things looking, I mean, dire for Binghamton, but they're giving themselves an opportunity to try and come back in this game. Now the thing is, when Talon made the decision to chase the Yone, I was thinking in my head, what are you doing? Go defend your go defend your base, but somehow it still worked out for him. That was a very risky move though, I have to say, because while he was trying to chase for that one kill on someone who is, oh, at the time, 3 and 2, which, you know, he might want that kill, uh, your, your entire base is getting demolished, like, it still worked out for him, though, like I said, so. The problem arises now, though. Baron is up in 10 seconds. There are no Nexus turrets available for Binghamton to try and hold their base with. The only thing left is that mid lane tower along with the inhibitor. So if you leave your base to try and contest this Baron, you can get backdoored by this TP from Ricky or Zephyrot, and you are just going to lose the game. So it looks like they will send someone to try and check out what's going on in this Baron, but I, I just think if they try and contest this, they might just lose the game. 100%. Um, I mean, even if they let St. Clair get this, though, they're going to lose the game. It, all St. Clair needs is, is that one push, and I think they're going to have a very easy push. Oh, Engage going to be here in the bot lane. Ara's going to catch two people, though. Beautiful art by Zephyrah going to catch one. Getting ult into the back line, but that's not where you want to be. That's where Zephyr wants to be. Going to get the knockup, but the scrub it. Going to take him out anyway. W going to catch two. Going to do a lot of damage here. That's going to be so much healing coming out. But that's going to be a shutdown there. Riha going to take down Midnight. That's going to be it. St. Clair going to clean up all the members of Binghamton. We're going to a game number three. I... <laughs> That, that was crazy. For a second, I thought that St. Clair was about to lose all their teammates, and I was going to say, well, I just made a, a terrible uh, mistake by saying that they would have won by getting that Baron, because, oh my god, if they lost all their teammates there, uh, right after getting that Baron, that would have been that little push that could have maybe brought uh, Bing back. At the same time, they are still in a very bad spot. Um, we are uh, going to be going into our third game here, which will be deciding who wins this. Again, single elimination for uh, NACE, which is uh, what we're in right now. Uh, we are going to be going to a quick break beforehand, though. So go grab your popcorn, go grab your drinks, use the washroom, be back. We're going to have a very fun last game. <laughs> 